Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. It is a blessing and honor to have you here with me again. Let's go ahead and dive into the week ahead because there is a lot to talk about. Now, before we dive into these transits, I do wanna let you know that we're going to be experiencing a lot of challenges and squares that are happening in the charts as a reflection of what's going on in the cosmic skies. And as I'm sharing this information with you guys, sometimes it can be real easy to get tripped up by what it is that we're hearing, and I don't want you to lose your power at any moment during this reading. For those of you guys that know me and have been with me since day one, you know that there's one thing that I say over and over and over again like a broken record, and that is... If you know how to work with the planets, you can make them work for you and not against you. You guys already know, I can hear the chorus of you guys repeating it along with me. And it's true though. If you know how to work with these planets, you can make them your best friend and not your worst enemy. The problem comes when we don't know the energy that we're dealing with. So we find ourselves pushing our heads up against a brick wall or we're swimming upstream or just things just don't feel like they're working out. Now, sometimes it's easy to point our fingers and say, oh, it's got to be Mercury retrograde. It's got to be these retrogrades. And I'm not going to lie to you. The retrogrades do create energy that can be very tricky to navigate through. There are a few retrograde planets here, but more than anything, it's the squares that it is that I'm seeing as I'm looking at the chart ahead. So grab some coffee, grab some tea, grab a soft, cozy blanket, grab your puppies, your babies, whoever it is that you're going to be hanging out with, whatever it is that you're going to be sipping on, and let's go ahead and dive right in. I love to do before I dive into the present and the future is I like to take a quick look back. This is to catch us all up and make sure that we're all on the same page. So the first thing I want to remind you guys of is we did have the new moon that is happening in the sign of Taurus. This happened May 19th, roughly around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The exact time was 11.54 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this new moon, remember I said, and if you don't remember, I'll link it down below, but remember I said that these grand gestures, these major changes, typically aren't gonna be found around the energy of the new moon, but it will occur because of a direct result of what opened up at the time of the new moon. So I asked you guys to keep your eyes and your ears on the news, on social media, and seeing what is happening in your present day life as a tip, a trick for you, for helping you to predict exactly what's going to come three, four, six weeks from now. One thing that I reminded you guys that I think was really, really powerful for you to use this Taurus new moon is to set intention if you work with manifestation and intentions around grounding yourself, stabilizing, uh, reconsidering tradition, money, stability, security, comfort, luxury, and also what it is that you are currently valuing because right now across the board, all over the world, our values are beginning to shift in a tremendous way. And the one way that I'm seeing this is by prioritizing not earthy luxury goods, meaning like high-end brands, although those things are great too for many, for many different reasons. I see it more as earthy, crunchy, and a, qual a higher quality of life. So there's an assessment that we're all doing individually where we are prioritizing what is, what is it that actually means the most to us, what makes us the most, and what affords us the quality of life that is going to help us to be feel grounded, feel more at peace, more centered, more healthy, more vital, all of those things. And this is not just our bank accounts, it's not our checkbooks, it's not our savings account, it's also our relationships, it's our physical fitness, it's how we're take care, taking care of ourselves. Now, for me personally, one thing that has really opened up for me that I was sharing with you guys is that I've been prioritizing nourishment and not achievement. Nourishment, not achievement. And one way that that's been showing up for me is 
focusing more on the things that is that bring me joy in my work and in my everyday. For me, that's spending time with my loved ones. So that means that I need to have the time to be able to spend with them so I'm not overbooking myself. I'm not overdoing too many orders, um, working on uh, fixed candles, the oils, etc., etc., but also readings. I'm, I'm not over writing. You know, you guys know I will do the most triple Virgo here, so I do to infinity and beyond at base level, right? Base level, that's where I usually operate from. I've been teaching myself how to walk back into a space of being so much more grounded and centered and stabilized and prioritizing peace. And that has been the real wealth for me. So where will you find me? Gardening. At the time of the new moon, I ended up getting uh, benefiting from a huge sale that was going on at my local nursery. I got new herbs brand new dirt that and I'm my compost is all mixed up and I'm ready to get my garden going. So that's just a small example of how this new moon has shown up for me. I'm curious to hear how it's been showing up for you guys. The next thing that it is that I'm watching is May 20th, Mars entered into the sign of Leo and this prioritizes our need to be active in the pursuit of things that bring us joy, pleasure and make us make life so much worth living, right? I think for a while, and I will include myself in this, for a while, again, there is this energy of achievement. What it is that we can do? And especially like, um, there was so much potential that was happening and there was, oh, and also there was a lot of threat to us in the last few years. And that was from a multitude of different, it was coming from a multitude of different directions. For things that you guys know about, you know, what think about the major trends that were going on in the news, but we can't even say them here on YouTube because we'll get flagged. So just go back the last two, three years and remember what that was like. So there was a lot of opportunity that showed up that presented itself, believe it or not, looking back, but there was also a lot of threats coming directly to us. And it was adrenal exhaustion for many. And then also on the flip side, you might have been bored, you might have been feeling stagnant, separated, isolated just a lot going on on your mind, body, soul, spirit. So one thing that I love about Mars's enter into the sign of Leo is that it starts to prioritize, prioritize and encourages you to focus on your creative pursuits, your happiness, your joy, your pleasure, what you create and, and it bringing you so much happiness that you're just like, wow, this is really why I'm here on earth. This is, this is it. My purpose is not to be a robot or to be a machine or to not do anything or to consume. My purpose is to find this beautiful in-between where my gifts and my strengths and my talents are something that I share with the world. I receive some type of monetary income for it or I, I weave it into my every day, whatever that looks like for me. And it's all these small things that make life significant and worth living. So I, I really, really love that energy for all of us. Again, this happened May 20th. It's May 22nd, the time that is that I'm filming this. We're gonna be feeling it all this week and the weeks to come. So don't forget that. The last energy that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the fact that the sun entered into the sign of Gemini. Now, I've always looked at Gemini as the best friends. I know that Gemini rules siblings and connections, but for me personally, my best friends have been almost adjacent to energy of my siblings. So that's my first thought that I connect with as I think about Gemini energy. I think about the engaging of really eccentric, fun, outgoing, curious conversations and energies that I personally, if you leave me by myself, I won't be able to get there alone. I just won't. I'm a Virgo. So half the time I got my head down in a book or I'm doing my work or I'm out in the garden or I'm taking care of my friends and my family that I don't even lift my head up. So Gemini energy, when it shows up within the chart, it's a reminder for us to go out, ask questions, sign up for classes, go to the bookstore, actually go to the bookstore. Don't just go to Amazon. Actually go to Barnes & Noble bookstore and get yourself, get your hands on something that really stands out to you, that gets your brain and your thoughts kind of worrying. Not worrying, worrying. Gets the wheels turning in a good way. Gemini energy, especially as the sun is now entering into the sign of Gemini, it opens our mind and our energies up for unlimited potential, different things that we can explore, um, some of you guys might be feeling like, okay, it's time for me to 
you know, be more active and go for walks and go for hiking and explore the areas around me, etc., etc. So these are ways that we can incorporate this. Also, this is a wonderful time to make connections with best friends, to reach out with your community, to reach out to old and new partnerships. Just be totally open to it. Different types of conversations. Say hi to a stranger, smile, and watch what happens because the, the skies around us right now are very, very, very friendly. Um, okay, now let's go uh, go ahead and talk about this week. There's still the influence. Now, this is where it gets a little tough. Um, and forgive me, guys, because the sun's starting to set, but it's going to get real warm and cozy in here. That My house is definitely, that's always the vibe. So as the sun starts to set, it will start getting darker, but the warm and cozy vibes will start to wrap around you. And it's actually one of my favorite times in the entire day, or I should say night, is when the sun dips and the fireplace going and you got the candles and you got some you got the puppies you got a warm book or just something that you're working on it feels really good so this week though there are a few red flags and by red flags it's things that we want to keep an eye out for because they can be a little difficult one of the first things that's standing out to me is the fact that mars ruling our drive our ambition our fire our the the spirit of our pursuit is um, perfectly opposing Pluto, who is now currently retrograde. And for those of you guys that don't know, Pluto typically is very intense, but when it's retrograde, it brings up all the intensity, all the darkness, all the secrets, all the sorcery, all the manipulation, all the power and the control. Ugh. It brings it all up back from the surface. Well, back, it brings it up to the surface and you have to re-examine it. So there's different ways that this energy can, energy can show up. But my concern is that when Mars is opposing with Pluto, it tends to be this very, it can show up in a very toxic, energetically draining way. You can feel like you're being manipulated. You can feel like your boundaries are being crossed. You yourself might not be respective or receptive to other people's boundaries. Certain qualities of your character or parts of your darker sides and we all have them start to reveal themselves and that gets expressed in this world it can be really a, not it can it is a tough transit to deal with is this one of those things where you should hide away from the entire world not if you don't want to i personally franklin not right now he's like now's a perfect time for me to lick myself <laughs> while mommy's recording nope Nope, you got that. You got your timing wrong, buddy. Um, but yeah, so Mars directly opposing Pluto, again, can create a lot of issues with power and control, frustration, emotional exhaustion, the, 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 the desire to protect yourself, to defend yourself, to push back is really, really strong with this energy and also to for, uh, push your will is very, very strong with these types of energies. And I caution you with them because this... Remember, it's not just you who's under these energies. It's a lot of uh, most, the people that are around you are feeling this as well, which means that they're under the influence, which means that they're under the gun, which means that they're stretched thin. And I just wouldn't want you to get into an argument or a lock battle with, with the wrong person at the wrong time, you know? Um, also within yourself, you could find a real serious emotional push pull that's happening within you and that can bring up a lot of your darker desires but also fears you know just things that you that make life a bit more stickier and trickier to live through that could bring up a, I don't want to say obsessive thoughts because Mars does not connect to our obsessive thoughts but when we think about actions and what inspires it it's this it's this like knee-jerk reaction that is that we have that it's really hard for you to scale back on. That's why I don't want to say thoughts is because it feels like you're not thinking about it. You just automatically lash out. So really keep an eye out for that. It's very easier said than done, but try to bring the best of yourself in a situation without overdoing it. For example, if you find that you're being used or abused or taken advantage of, you do not need to give your best of, of yourself to the situation. Keep your head up and remove yourself from the situation completely. Remember, Pluto is working to wipe out, to remove, to cleanse any type of toxic, abrasive energy. But because it's retrograde, all of that's bringing brought up to the surface. And then when we have the when we have Mars 
directly opposing it, pulling it out, like extracting this energy, it's going to show up somewhere. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to show up for you guys. Again, it's nothing to be afraid of, but it's something to be aware of. The next thing that's standing out to me is Venus, who's currently transiting through the sign of Cancer, which I love. She's going to be squaring off with Chiron, and Chiron is the part of us that is wounded. Now, do you see kind of like the trickiness of this? So we have energies around us that are swirling around us where we have the Achilles Achilles tendon where if someone says think about okay I'll put myself I'll put myself so there's uh, for the most part I'm pretty calm I'm pretty pretty peaceful straightforward I'm pretty direct with my communication if I don't like you or if we have conflict it's because you deserved it you did something you pushed past a boundary etc etc however having said that there are a few things that will hit a button with me that it takes all the energy that I have to watch my mouth and watch what I do once that button is hit. <laughs> and we have Venus squaring Chiron here and Chiron is sitting in the sign of Aries and Venus is naturally pretty sensitive. So when this, when this happens, when Venus starts triggering that this is another point of irritation within our charts where it's like it's really hard for you to hold back really really hard and so this might be a lashing out at others but also keep in mind that Venus also represents beauty self-worth and self self value and how we love ourselves so someone or something might irritate or something subconsciously starts to reemerge starts to bubble up from or brew from the bottom and you might be looking at yourself and be like why 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 you know this I don't want to say self-hate but when we when the thoughts that we think are not a reflection of, of how the divine sees us and it's hard to get back to that space of unconditional love and grace and understanding and acceptance, it that is a battle all by itself, honey. You can tell yourself to your blue in the face, I love myself. I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm strong. But those moments when we have transits like this, this that hit that nerve, it's really hard to bring yourself back into that space of strength and clarity. So what I would do is I would allow myself to ride through it. Do the best that you can to ride through it. Honestly, guys, as I'm saying this, you can't see this, but there are two mocking words, mocking words that look like mirror reflections of each other fighting in the background. Like they look like they're fighting. It looks like someone fighting with themselves. But I understand that it's two mockingbirds, so I take that as a metaphor. I'm really big on symbolism. It is getting so dark in here. Let's see if we can turn the lights up just a little bit. We are striving for progress, not perfection, okay? We'll take what we can get with this lighting here today, okay? Okay, real quick question, guys. How are you doing? How are you doing? Are you with me right now? Is this making sense? Please let me know if this is making sense. Um, I know that there's a lot of bits of information that you can get as far as astrology here on the web. You guys know I like to go deep with it always and forever. That's always going to be the way. So I hope that it is making sense. I hope that this benefits you. And if it does, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on. So yes, those internal conflicts and conversations that is that we have with ourselves can be very interesting. Sometimes people, the way that people feel about themselves, it could be, they could be harboring some type of resentment or as, and there's a bunch of different things that are contributing to this. So it's not just one thing. It can make someone explode, quit their jobs, break off a relationship, cut all ties. It'll be really interesting to see how this energy manifests. But when you see it, don't be surprised. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that the sun is going to be squaring off with Saturn. Now Saturn is in the planet, is in a sign of Pisces, which is teaching us even more how to stabilize ourselves. Yeah. Teaching us more how to stabilize. I want to make sure I got that transit correctly. I've been pulling charts all day today and the weekend because as you guys know, I've been pulling, I offered the Jupiter transit. Um, reading where I'm pulling my clients individual charts and assessing it what is how Jupiter's transit right now for those of you guys that don't know Jupiter just entered into the side of Taurus Taurus is going through it right now Taurus does rule something in your chart I know some of you guys don't think that Taurus does Taurus rules something within your chart believe me so my clients um, and I have a, a bunch of them right now I'm working through each one of their charts individually and going through um, what they can expect. So I'm a little bit twisted up when it comes to transits, dates, names, all of it, time, all of it, <laughs> because I've, it's a lot, it's a lot, but it's good. It's been, it's been giving me life. 
um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh yeah. So Saturn transiting through the sign of Pisces is really teaching us how to ground ourselves and cement ourselves in our own intuition, our own feelings, and our artwork, and our our ability to create, our ability to heal, really to take it seriously. On the flip side, it's changing our politics, our government, our business, which we've already started to see. I love it. I love that. However, when the sun starts squaring off with Saturn, there is a strong need, again, to kind of break free and go your own way, whatever that looks like for you. Um, someone needs a little bit more space than they normally would. I can relate to that. I don't care how much I love you. I don't care. There's like a level of irritation that is brewing in the cosmic skies that it's just a little space is needed. So walks in the park, doing things that really feel good for you, spending some time, I don't want to say alone, but just doing what you need to do. Um, and, and split away is going to be very beneficial to take a step to walk away when you're dealing with these types of energies because again the sense of irritation is very strong okay there's that but also we have people in positions of power who are actually using and abusing it kind of over overstepping their boundaries knowing okay think about it this way if you are have think of it as a job this is the best example I can think of if you get paid to work nine to five, your boss knows this and five oh four four fifty eight she comes in and says, I need your help with writing this paper. And she knows your character, she knows your work ethic, and she automatically assumes that even though she's asking you, yo, can you stay late, you don't really have a, a, there's this assumption that you don't actually have a choice in the matter, and she's taking advantage of the situation, and then you snap because this is not the first time. These are transits that, that example perfectly reflects this type of energy of this transit. It's like, you know my boundary, you know my character, you know what's up, and yet you can, you asked me this, and then it's like, 5.38, you, so you say yes to it, you're like, fine, I'll just get it fucking done, pardon my French, I'll just get it done, and then like 5.38, she comes back in and she's just like, yo, can I add one more thing, and then next you know, you're there till 7 p.m., and then next day, she asks you to come in early, and that's where you draw the line. Everyone's different, but I'm just using that as an example, that's the energy that we can expect. One thing that I will say that is for us to look forward to is June 2nd, at nighttime, plan a date, plan a date. Just plan a date or go out. If you're ready to mix and mingle and, and, and meet someone and sauce something up, well, that sounded weird. Maybe less sauce or if you're going to have sauce, make sure that you're wearing protection or something. You know, not, we just, you know, there's some spicy sauce out there. We just, you know, mm, that's not good. Okay. No spicy sauces. <laughs> but June 2nd, see if you can plan a date for that day. It's just a really nice, sexy time. Let's go ahead and see what day that is. Oh, it's a Saturday. Oh, actually, no, it's not. May. Fuck. Let me look. Oh, no. Ooh, even better. It's a Friday. Day of love. You better get on it. You better get on it. Your astrology best friend, your astrologer best friend told you. So, or plan a girl's night or book a like little hotel, little getaway, state, um, staycation type of thing, whatever it is. Do something nice for yourself on that day, especially after the week that is that you had. Okay, talk coming to you from the future after the week that you had. Yeah, you deserve it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and head off. For those of you guys that don't know, Bahati Love Notes. Wow, it's really dark in here. Okay, Bahati Love Notes is a subscription service that it is that I have where I shuffle and pull cards for you guys every single day for the most part. However, maybe about once every two months, not that it matters, I take like three days off to just kind of like vibe. Um, yesterday I took a day off and the day before that just because I was working on readings but yeah it's $15 a month and I shuffle and pull the tarot I share with the affirmations really intense journaling prompts things that are really good for you good for the soul especially now um, so I'll link it down below but in the meantime you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me please let me know if this video resonated how you're vibing with this now what is your favorite color make sure that you're subscribed and I'll see you in my next video bye